Item number SCP-1165 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1165 is to remain permanently closed to civilian traffic. Both entrances to SCP-1165 are to be fenced and marked with quarantine signs, in English and Spanish, warning of high concentrations of toxic contaminants. Planes closed security personnel are to monitor entrances and act as necessary to discourage unauthorized entrance. All businesses with doors or windows facing SCP-1165 are to have set exits walled over, padlocked, or otherwise rendered inaccessible to prevent unsecured access. Any municipal or utility vehicles requiring access to SCP-1165 are to enter by the western entrance and exit by the east entrance only. All survey teams entering SCP-1165 are to be accompanied by a squad strength detachment from MTF Tau-1165. Snickleway. All individuals operating within SCP-1165 are to keep a GPS beacon, wireless communication device, and helmet camera on their person at all times. Surveys are not to enter SCP-1165 at night or when there is a possibility of electric power outage due to weather or grid overload. Any unauthorized persons entering or exiting SCP-1165 are to be detained, debriefed, and administered a Class B amnestic. Any person observed exiting SCP-1165 is to be assumed to be hostile until a contrary determination can be made. SCP-1165 consists of an alleyway located in and an anomalous urban area connecting to it. The alley runs east to west for approximately 0.3 km in downtown, bisecting the city block created by Street and Street on the east and west, and by Street and Avenue on the north and south. City records indicate that the alley was laid out when the streets of were first paved in the early 20th century. Aside from construction and renovation of abutting structures, utility work, and a repaving in 19, it has undergone no significant changes since then. The alley exhibits no anomalous effects to traffic entering from the west or exiting from the east. When a traveler enters the alley's eastern exit and proceeds westward, however, there is a 36% probability that the alley will not exit onto street, but onto a street not accessible by other means. This street connects to a network of other streets that extends outward in no particular pattern, none of which can be accessed by any means other than the alley. These streets while almost always meeting at four-way grid intersections, are highly irregular in layout and begin and end abruptly. Traffic lights, lamp posts, and other electronics present within SCP-1165 have power received from an as-of-yet unidentified source, and function reliably without any indication of human intervention. The streets of SCP-1165 are lined with buildings mostly demonstrating examples of 20th century American architecture. The vast majority of the buildings appear to be of a business storefront or industrial nature. Less than 6% of buildings surveyed are residential structures. Of buildings surveyed to date, 17% have been identified as strongly resembling or being identical to buildings known to exist in the area. 24% have been identified as resembling buildings found in other locations, most notably a 300-meter structure resembling the Eiffel Tower visible in the distance northeast from the entrance to the alley. Road signage exhibits names of known and unknown streets in a similar manner. No automobiles or people, except as per Survey Log 1165, have been spotted within SCP-1165, nor any animal or insect life. Plant life is limited to grass, flowers, and small trees found growing in yards of buildings or along sidewalk easements. SCP-1165 extends outward in all directions from the entrance point of the alley. To date, Foundation teams have fully surveyed and charted 27 square kilometers of SCP-1165, an area of land encompassing the entirety of downtown and surrounding neighborhoods, and extending outwards into Bay and No geographical boundary to SCP-1165 has yet been determined except as per Survey Log 1165. 
The streets and buildings found within SCP-1165 have not changed since the first Foundation survey entered SCP-1165 in 19. Returning down the entrance alley will return any traveler to Street 100% of the time. Cellular phones and GPS devices continue to function within SCP-1165 and indicate that the device is in a location relative to the distance the bear has traveled from the western exit of the alley. The Foundation discovered SCP-1165 in 19 when an politician of note disappeared in midday while on a walking tour of downtown with several campaign volunteers. Police identified the alley as last known whereabouts and encountered SCP-1165 while canvassing the area. A police liaison informed the Foundation of the anomalous effect, which led to the Foundation assuming jurisdiction over SCP-1165. Neither nor any of his walking companions were ever found. For detailed findings regarding discoveries within SCP-1165, refer to Survey Log-1165. Survey Log 1165 the Foundation has conducted 283 sorties into SCP-1165 since its discovery in 19. The following is an abridged log containing information on notable discoveries made during exploration thereof. Level 3 access is required to view unabridged logs. Please contact Dr. Samish for access. Survey 1165-1 Date 19 Findings First formal Foundation sortie in the SCP-1165. Surveyors explored an area one square kilometer around the entry point. A circuit was completed of the block that the alley exits onto, and no eastern point of entrance were found. Air, soil, and plant samples taken. No anomalous properties found in air or soil. Plant samples were found to exhibit an abnormally high amount of mutation. Survey 1165-3 Date 19. Findings. MTF surveyed interiors of 13 buildings within a 1.5 km radius of entry point, eight of which have been identified to resemble known buildings. Floor plans of those buildings were found to match those of known buildings. Photographs indicated that arrangement of furniture, state of repair, etc. were also highly similar. Unidentified buildings were found to possess unusual floor plans with rooms attached to each other in highly unconventional manners and with atypical furnishings. All doors and windows in buildings surveyed were found to be unlocked. Further examination found that all objects capable of being locked, cabinets, safes, etc., were also unlocked. Survey 1165-15 Date 19 Findings Two desktop computers were retrieved from a structure resembling a Best Buy electronics store. Both computers were found to have a hardware profile similar to Intel PCs available on the market at the time of the survey. Both computers were running a clean factory installation of Windows 95 and had no user-installed software or personalized settings. All software installed on both computers were found to be highly glitchy with windows frequently returning divide by zero errors and crashing to a blue screen of death fatal error message. Other software frequently crashing or hanging, and the system calculated producing incorrect answers to simple arithmetic problems. Formatting the hard drive and installing a new copy of Windows 95 produced similar errors, as did removing components from the computers and installing them into other machines. Survey 1165-28 Date 19. Findings While surveying an area 5.3 km from entry point, MTF encountered an adult male approximately 40 years of age. Said individual identified himself as a transient who had been reported as a missing person six years prior in 19. During debriefing following his removal from SCP-1165, claimed that he and another transient had unknowingly entered SCP-1165 through the alley at night while drunk and found themselves lost when they awoke the next day. Discovering the area to be abandoned, they had taken to squatting in a residential building and scavenging food and alcohol from nearby buildings, in particular a building resembling a convenience store. Was unable or unwilling to say where his friend was and became visibly distressed when the issue was raised was administered a Class A amnestic and relocated to several thousand kilometers away. 
A convenience store was found with an SCP-1165 at the coordinates given by. It was found to be fully stocked with foodstuffs comparable to those sold at convenience stores. Food was found to be fresh and edible, though unusually high in compounds known to cause. A gas pump was attached to the station. Gas found therein refused to ignite when exposed to open flame. Cameras installed in the store have noted no evidence of any restocking or replacement of food. Survey 1165-68 Date 19 Findings MTF returned to the convenience store discovered after Survey 28 to replace monitoring equipment. Food was found to still be fresh and edible. In spite of the fact that no activity had been noted within the store since first installation of cameras, several products were found in the store which, on the previous visit, had not been present and were not available for purchase at the time. Survey 1165-103 Date 2000 and Findings While surveying an area 8.7 km from entry point, MTF discovered an automobile identified as a 1956 Studebaker President parked on the side of a four-lane street. The car was found to be excellently preserved and in drivable condition. The gas tank was empty, and the odometer indicated that the vehicle had driven a total of 2,638 miles, or 4,245 kilometers. The trunk was found to contain suitcases full of a variety of apparel, as well as children's toys and a baby stroller. Canvassing of the area proved unable to locate the owners of the vehicle prior to abandoning SCP-1165 for the day due to impending twilight. Survey 1165-105 Date 2000 and Findings On the third canvas of the area where the Studebaker was found, the MTF located, leaning against a wall in an alleyway, the skeletal remains of an adult male dressed in a dark suit and fedora hat clutching a 38 caliber revolver in its right hand. All rounds in the revolver were spent. Identification found in a wallet in the suit pocket identified the remains as belonging to who was reported missing with his wife and children during a family vacation in 1956. License plate on the Studebaker was found to have been registered to cause of death could not be determined, and suit showed no signs of damage or trauma. A camera loaded with a spent roll of Kodak black and white film was hanging from a strap around neck. Upon being developed, most of the roll consisted of pictures of and its family. The last eight photos were identified as having been taken within SCP-1165, showing buildings identified by surveyors and several no longer present. The final photo showed a the remains of wife and children, age 9, five and eight months have not been located. Survey 1165-141 Date 2000 and Findings MTF transported a helicopter into SCP-1165 via a flatbed truck for the purpose of conducting an aerial survey. Aerial team ascended to 500 meters above ground level and observed that SCP-1165 extended to the horizon in all directions and did not appear to encounter any geographical barriers. Aerial team overflew the Eiffel Tower, which was determined to be located 27.4 km from entry point, and identical to the original monument in every way perceivable from the air. Team was instructed to fly eastward until either spotting the edge of SCP-1165 or turning around became necessary due to low fuel. After traveling 103 km at a height of 500 meters, Pilot reported the helicopter's onboard altimeter, compass, barometer, wind gauge, and GPS device had stopped functioning and that the team had lost visual contact with the surface. Base team also lost GPS contact with the helicopter at this time. Team was ordered to make an emergency landing. Pilot attempted to descend and reported that he could not find the ground and that visual inspection showed nothing but blue sky and clouds beneath the helicopter. The pilot reversed direction and attempted to return in the direction of base team, but was unable to make contact or regain GPS contact. After six hours of unsuccessfully attempting to return to base, pilot reported the helicopter had run out of fuel and was in freefall. After seven minutes without reaching the ground, pilot and support team committed suicide by gunshot. Onboard video continued to document the helicopter falling at terminal velocity 
until camera battery died 17 hours later. Neither the helicopter nor the remains of its crew have been located. Survey 1165-145 Date 2000 and Findings MTF transported an unmanned aerial vehicle equipped with extra batteries into SCP-1165. UAV was launched in the direction of the last known whereabouts of the aerial team lost during Survey 141. UAV reached those coordinates without incident and canvassed the area unsuccessfully. While overflying a region 113.4 km from entry point at a height of 1500 meters, UAV's instruments and GPS failed and visual contact with the ground was lost. Non-essential systems were put into standby to maximize battery life and UAV was placed into freefall. As of this date, years later, UAV is still transmitting and is still in a state of freefall. Following this survey, all further aerial surveys have been preemptively denied. Survey 1165-174 Date 2000 and Findings A group of eight D-Class awaiting scheduled termination were divided into two teams, and each were given an automobile with extra fuel capacity and a full battery of monitoring equipment and environmental sensors. Teams were brought into SCP-1165 and instructed to drive to the eastmost boundary of the city, and told that whichever team reached that point first would be given their freedom. At 128 km and 201 km distance from the entry point, respectively, both teams encountered phenomena consistent with surveys 141 and 145. Subdermal transmitters intended to track the D-Class's vital signs found that, of the three who did not kill themselves or each other in the immediate aftermath, the eventual cause of death was dehydration. All requests to survey areas more than 100 km distant from the entry point are preemptively denied. Survey 1165-193 Date 2000 and Findings Using aerial photography acquired during surveys 141 and 145, MTF attempted to travel to the Eiffel Tower and survey its surroundings. Upon reaching the point where aerial surveys indicated should be the location of the tower, MTF found instead a factory bearing the legend Hansen Screws. The tower remained visible in the distance in the same cardinal direction as it was visible from relative to the entry point. Upon attempting again to reach it, the MTF found it once again absent and visible in the distance. Careful observation during a third attempt to reach it showed that the tower did not seem to grow any closer as the MTF approached it. A fourth attempt to reach the tower was called off, as doing so would send the team beyond a 100 km mark from the entrance. Survey 1165-246 Date 2000 and Findings During a survey of the area near the first apparent location of the Eiffel Tower, a sudden power outage resulted in the loss of wireless communications with the area. All contact with the MTF was lost. Power was not restored until after dusk nine hours later. At that time, an attempt to re-establish contact with MTF proved unsuccessful. A nighttime sortie in the SCP-1165 was authorized. Upon reaching the MTF's last known location, SNR team found the MTF's vehicles parked in a circle in an intersection and abandoned. A large number of spent shell casings were spread on the ground around and inside the circle. However, the vehicles themselves had suffered no damage and there was no sign of any blood or corpses in the area. A single member of the MTF was found in an alley six blocks away, having barricaded himself behind several overturned garbage cans. All ammunition issued to the member had been expended. Upon debriefing, Survivor asserted that the rest of the squad was dead but was unable to say how or why. Survivor was highly confused about what had happened during the time contact was lost and the SNR team located him, only repeating that no sign of the remaining MTF members have been found to date. Survey 1165-248 Date 2000 and Findings During a follow-up canvas of the area explored by Survey 246, a severely deformed humanoid corpse was discovered in the open doorway of a warehouse. Photographs of the corpse taken by MTF were highly corrupted and impossible to interpret. 
Descriptions by MTF members observing the corpse indicated that it had appeared normal from the chest down, but had no arms or head, a dozen fleshy pseudopods with no apparent sensory organs, apparent cause of death with multiple gunshot wounds, however, there was no sign of bleeding from any of the wounds. The corpse was nude except for a pair of black slacks. During examination, an MTF member reported seeing a moving figure in the shadows inside the warehouse and hearing a loud noise similar to radio static. MTF commander made the decision to evacuate SCP-1165 and leave the corpse. A wallet was found in the corpse's slacks containing 37 American dollars, several store discount cards, and a driver's license belonging to James K. Stevenson. Stevenson is a Foundation legal consultant with Level 1 clearance, working from a front company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, who has not participated in any activities relating to SCP-1165. When interviewed, Stevenson claimed no knowledge of SCP-1165, stated he had never been to, and showed that his wallet and driver's license were in his possession. Both were identical to the wallet retrieved from the corpse. A tissue sample acquired from the corpse prior to the evacuation showed a 99.999995% likelihood of a match with Stevenson. Survey 1165-249 Date 2000 and Findings A double-strength MTF detachment was sent to the warehouse found by Survey 248. The corpse discovered at time was no longer present and a thorough canvas of the warehouse and surrounding buildings failed to locate it or any other such entities. Further surveys of an area within one square kilometer of the warehouse are preemptively denied.